Building vertiports is the biggest challenge for urban air mobility today. Today, we'll explore the exciting world of urban air mobility and how vertiports are key to this new way of traveling. What challenges do engineers face as they try to transform our cities into places where we can fly? Let's jump in and see what it takes to make this dream come true. Urban air mobility is becoming a reality, not just something for movies. Companies all over the world are in a hurry to set up vertiports, places where EV tolls or electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft can land and take off. A cool example is PSNS's waterside vertiports, which are designed to be near city waterways. This helps keep the city quieter while making it easier to get around. Archer Aviation is also getting in on the action by teaming up with Reef Technology to turn parking garages into vertiports, using spaces that are already there. These projects show how important location is. Waterside vertiports are quieter but can only be built in coastal areas. Rooftop vertiports, on the other hand, are great for maximizing space in cities but need strong buildings to hold the weight of several EV tolls. How do you squeeze a landing pad into a busy city? That's the big challenge for vertiports. Each pad needs to handle four to six passenger EV tolls, which are quieter than helicopters but still make some noise. Engineers are tackling this by using noise dampening materials and advanced acoustic shields. Space is another issue. Urban vertiports often use rooftops, but these need upgrades to handle heavy equipment and more foot traffic. Safety is super important too. Vertiports need fireproof materials, backup power systems, and emergency evacuation plans. These steps are all about meeting safety standards that are still being worked out. Charging an EV tall isn't as easy as just plugging in your phone. The charging system at a vertiport needs to provide fast recharging to keep downtime short. Each EV toll has a battery that limits how far it can go kind of like a Tesla and there are algorithms that help figure out the best routes and when to charge. Passenger terminals need to be set up for smooth flow with waiting areas, clear signs, and quick boarding systems so nobody waits longer than 10 minutes. It's like a mini airport experience. Air traffic control is an even bigger challenge. Urban air traffic management systems have to keep track of many EV tolls at once, making sure they don't bump into each other and follow city noise rules. Automation is key. Sense and avoid tech will help EV tolls fly safely without needing human pilots. UAM isn't just about flying cars, it's also about making cities greener. Vertiports are designed to cut down on road congestion, which accounts for 15 to 30 percent of carbon emissions in urban areas by promoting electric flights. There's even talk of solar-powered vertiports, and both electric and hydrogen EV tolls produce zero direct emissions, making them much cleaner than traditional planes. Countries like Spain, where aviation makes up 1.2 percent of GDP, see UAM as a way to upgrade their infrastructure. In the U.S., EV tall operations are expected to start by 2025, with widespread use likely around 2030. There's a lot of planning to do, but the result, a faster, cleaner urban future, is definitely worth it. What do you think? Will tackling the challenges of building vertiports really help us take to the skies? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.